Air pollution is a major public health issue worldwide. The European Environment Agency estimates that despite significant progress over the past 20 years, air pollutants are responsible for 400,000 deaths per year, called premature deaths. And the cost of such pollution is estimated at several hundred billion of euros per year. Such figures deserve your full attention. This new comprehensive MOOC video complements the other videos that you already know. You may remember the video on air pollutants, which explained how the size of polluting particles influences the respiratory place where they act, and which also explains the role of a mucociliary system and that of alveolar macrophages that both act as defense mechanism against pollutants. That video also addressed the dangers of smoking and the effects of smoking on the lungs. Then, the video about asthma explained the immunological mechanism by which an air pollutant can start a cascade of events leading to inflamed and blocked smaller airways. You then watched the video about emphysema, explaining how small polluting particles act on the pulmonary alveoli leading to destruction of elastic fibers. Finally, you saw in the video dedicated to CO2 the importance of this gas on the greenhouse effect and global warming, and the fact that the concentration of atmospheric CO2 has risen sharply since the industrial era. Hi Claire, thank you for helping us to understand the issues of air pollution. Hi Franck. And as a first question, what's the difference between greenhouse gases and air pollutants? Sure. The greenhouse effect is the vibration of certain molecules that absorb infrared radiation reflected by the Earth. This generates heat, and that's very good for our planet. But the exaggeration of this phenomenon contributes to global warming. Greenhouse gases therefore affect the climate, although they are not necessarily pollutants. Take, for instance, the CO2 emitted by cars and much talked about these days. That CO2 affects the climate, but it's not in itself an air pollutant. CO2 does not cause diseases such as asthma, respiratory infections, cardiovascular diseases or cancer. Conversely, when burning wood in a fireplace, you are doing what is called biomass burning. It's called green energy CO2. The CO2 cycle balance is neutral. There is no greenhouse gas effect. However, you produce a whole range of other polluting particles. So you may have heard about the capital of Mongolia, Ulaanbaatar, which is one of the most polluted cities in the world. This is due to the use of coal stoves in the hundreds of thousands of yurts located in the periphery of this city. So, air pollutants and greenhouse gases have in common the fact that they both depend on human activity, industrial, road traffic, agriculture and energy production, resulting in dysregulation of either the climate or else. And what about ozone, the ozone layer and ozone peaks? Ozone, O3, is first of all a greenhouse gas. Secondly, High up in the atmosphere, ozone forms a protective layer that traps the sun's ultraviolet rays. The ozone layer has been much talked about in the 80s, as it was getting thinner because of the use of fluorocarbons. This issue has now greatly improved thanks to international awareness. Thirdly, the same ozone, this time on the surface of the Earth, just above our heads, is a pollutant that can cause irritation of a respiratory tract, for example, in case of ozone peaks. The results of spirometry tests such as FEV are worse, especially in children. This ozone is a secondary pollutant. That is to say, it comes from other pollutants and rises especially when the weather is warm and sunny. And paradoxically, it rises more in the countryside because that's where ozone is less degraded by classic pollutants of the cities. These are the famous ozone peaks occurring mainly during the summer. 
and which are sometimes accompanied by the famous smog. Yes, smog is a polluted fog of big cities composed of ozone, nitrogen and sulfur oxides and other harmful pollutants which deteriorate breathing, especially in children and the frail. Another detail, the summer ozone peaks have nothing to do with pollution peaks in winter, which are due to the accumulation of pollutants such as nitrogen oxides and smaller particles when the cold weather and no wind prevent the dispersion of these particles. As these pollutants stem mainly from road traffic, the authorities can then force motorists not to exceed, for example, 90 km per hour on motorways in Belgium. This emergency measure is, of course, largely insufficient to curb the problem. Let us now talk about the main air pollutants. First, I wish to speak about pollutants which are solid particles, as these are the best studied and the most measured pollutants. PM10 is the name given to particles which measure less than 10 microns in diameter, which are highly involved in vehicle pollution, in particular diesel engines, which are not equipped with filters. It is well known that an increase in these particles in the air following peak exposure is associated in the following days to an increase in mortality rates from cardiopulmonary diseases, in higher hospitalization rates due to respiratory diseases, and in worsening of asthma attacks. In case of prolonged exposure, or if you live near a factory that emits such particles, there is an increased prevalence rate of asthma, particularly in children. So, the causal link between exposure to such particles and acute respiratory diseases is considered plausible. The risk of cancer associated with air pollution to such particles is regarded as likely, but certainly well below the ravages of smoking. Nitrogen oxides such as NO2, NO or N2O are well-known pollutants. They're responsible for the brownish cloud of pollution and the odour of polluted air in big cities. They're also responsible for the recent scandal caused by Volkswagen when it became known that their cars were fitted with fudge control devices of nitrogen oxides. These oxides stem from so-called fossil fuels, i.e. oil, coal or natural gas. It's been shown that a peak concentration of these pollutants in big cities leads to an increase in the hospitalization rate for asthma in the following days. Let us also not forget that NO2 is a powerful greenhouse gas, which has a lifespan of over 120 years and has over a 10 kilometer radius zone. And what about indoor? Pollution. You're right, Frank. Indoor pollution is considered actually more serious than outdoor pollution. Respiratory effects of smoking are of course involved, but there are plenty of other pollutants which have a direct pulmonary and respiratory impact. PM2.5 particles from chimney fires and heating increase the risk of coughing, bronchitis and respiratory infections. Volatile organic compounds, VOCs, such as scented candles, are respiratory irritants. Let us not forget pollens and all the other allergens. And there is even radon, which can be highly prevalent in eastern areas of Belgium. In conclusion, this video has raised your awareness about the global problem of air pollution. You are now ready to analyze yourself a pollutant of your choice. The instructions concerning your work will be explained after the video. You are spoiled for choice, as there are so many original respiratory system pollutants. Dust storms or volcanic gases are also part of natural pollutants. You could choose to write up about heavy metals, fire smoke, asbestos, tear gas or anesthetic gases, chlorine from swimming pool, pollens, radon, Faded genes, lots of success.